Josh Steffler for Freedom Free for All Television. I'm joined with Stephen Bassett after his speech at Disclosure Canada, the Modern Knowledge Tour in Vancouver. Thank you for joining us, Stephen. Glad to be with you, John. So you were talking a lot about the benefits of ending the truth embargo, but you kind of got cut a little bit short. So maybe we could expand on really why we need to end the truth embargo and what kind of benefits humanity has from ending this embargo. Well... I was, uh, yeah, I had to rush at the end. I wasn't able to close out some points. Uh, I was focusing in this case on the benefits, not just to Canada, but to the entire planet. And the focus is on technology. The truth embargo is not just the refusal to acknowledge the extraterrestrial presence, a policy of the United States government. It's also the refusal to allow reverse engineer technologies of extraordinary implications into the public domain. Uh, that doesn't mean there isn't a desire maybe to do that within government, but the way it is right now, for them to bring out anti-gravitic propulsion systems, which they have, or paradigm-shifting energy systems, which would be the systems in those craft, would require the truth embargo to end. And so the analogy I use is this. Until the embargo on Cuba ended, you couldn't get Cuban cigars. It's that simple. Yeah. Now that it's ending, you can get cigars. So, But we're not talking cigars here. We're talking massive technology. Now... The energy uh, uh, that they, these craft are using may be ground state field stuff, which means systems built around that physics probably would allow us to drop the cost of an electron, electron by 98%. Now, what does that mean? It means we could build furnaces hot enough, cheap enough, to burn all of our garbage instead of throwing in the ocean or burying it underground. All of it, billions of tons. We could um, uh, build desalinization plants. Uh, which is the best way to deal with water, steam distillation, and provide all the needed water in California and everywhere else in the world. We can't do it now because energy costs too much, yeah. because the energy industry is raking it in. All it's right? almost like it's a rigged game, would you oh, say? it is a rigged game. Uh, and they don't care. They don't care how many millions of people die. Well, the anti-gravitic propulsion would allow us to get rid of all of our nuclear waste by moving it into the sun. Uh, it would allow us to clean up the Pacific Ocean, which is being destroyed, by building very large craft with anti-gravitic systems that could skim the Pacific Ocean with huge skimming uh, devices, and, and because of anti-gravitics, very deep uh, penetration, going down 20, 30, 40 feet, then bring all of that garbage, which is unbelievable now, in the, in the Pacific garbage patches, back to land and burn it. So now we've cleaned up the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. We're getting rid of all of our garbage, all right? We're getting rid of our... Uh, we're getting rid of the nuclear waste, which is piling up in thousands of waste dumps all over the world. All right. Uh, this is just a glimpse of the, what these technologies can do. And essentially, every year that goes by where those technologies are sequestered because the truth embargo is still primary, a huge price is being paid by the entire human race. And by and large, the people inside, which is a very limited number of individuals, are not prepared to solve the problem that gets this done. The job of the advocacy movement is to create a situation where the president absolutely has to acknowledge the extraterrestrial presence. It doesn't mean he mentions the technology. But once the acknowledgement is there, That's I suspect there's going to be a fairly substantial effort to say, okay, what about the tech? Mm -hmm. And so there's an unbelievable amount at stake here. I, I can give hours of lecture on the implications of these two technologies alone that solve most of the problems that we face in the world, right? Uh, you may say, no, no, that's impossible. No, no, it's not impossible because these technologies are extraordinary. These are paradigm shifts. Yeah. Anti-gravitic propulsion and ground state field energy because the, 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 the very space around us, as our own physics has uh, learned, is filled with massive energy. What can I say? And the extraterrestrials who are more advanced can tap into it. We can't, but we have their ships and we've been studying them. So that's just what I was trying to get across. Yeah. And the other thing I was trying to get across, which is really extraordinary, is that the evidence is increasingly mounting that the species, or whatever you want to call them, the civilizations that are dealing with us, actually already have genetic connections to the Earth, to life here. Reptilian life, insectoid, and even human. We're already genetic connected. And more importantly, logically, uh, if interstellar uh, societies have been traveling the galaxy for, well, as long as you want to go, and you could go back 10 billion years, there was still possible to have such societies, uh, uh, what they've been doing is moving DNA from biospheres probably all around. The whole galaxy may be genetically connected because of this motility. Uh, that's unbelievable. 
So we're, we're not just being engaged by extraterrestrials. We're not just alone. We're being visited by genetic relations, in a sense. Right? This is incredible. And this may be the most profound information that will come post-disclosure, that will change worldviews. We're already connected to the galaxy, so why are we building nuclear weapons and bombing the hell out of each other? Right? This is the point. This is why disclosure must happen. This is why I ask if I could have one more Canadian to put up some money, we can get this done, because the, the, the citizen hearing on disclosure was funded by a Vancouver resident. Where we are now. One million dollars. Uh, we need about another 50000 uh, if not much, to make sure this, the Congressional Hearing Initiative, which is underway right now, and you can find it at ParadigmResearchGroup.org, finishes. Not just sort of finishes or almost finishes, finishes. And by finish, I mean we get the commitment to the hearings, which will create a situation based upon what I know that probably ensures that the president will be forced to uh, cut a deal with the Pentagon and make the announcement. We could see it this summer if we continue to keep the pressure on right now. Now, if somebody blows a city up with a nuclear weapon or launches a bio attack or God knows what else is out there, no, we'll have to wait years because I won't be able to talk to anybody on the Hill. So people will think, ah, it'll happen when it happens. Big mistake, big mistake. There is so much awful stuff out there. And, and, and one of the problems, not it's a problem, is that Canada is in such a wonderful position in the world right now. It's very heavily buffered from what's coming, but eventually Canada is going to have to deal with it. And so given that Canada is in such a great place, great society, uh, and it has got a record of peacekeeping and, and advanced thinking, though it's changing as your current government starts sending planes to the Middle East to kill America's enemies, big mistake. Uh, huge mistake. Huge mistake. Um, again, if Canada can help get this job done, it will get a hell of a lot of historical credit for being the country pretty much that funded most of the key work at the end that brought the greatest event in human history about. And Canada, that works for me. That works for me. Because we can't get the money from Americans. They're too intimidated. And why do you think Americans are too intimidated? Because they've been under the truth embargo for 60 years, their entire lives. Uh, there's more intimidation. They're more afraid of their government. They're more afraid of being ridiculed. In other words, Canada is not America. I mean, Canada's gone along with the truth embargo, obviously, but it hasn't been, you know, raining propaganda down on the Canadians, right? Didn't well, we are under heavy propaganda in Canada here, too, but... Uh, but not on this issue. No. They're not, they're, not, they're not, you know, putting out huge amounts of disinformation. Now, some of the stuff that happens in the United States it works its way up here yeah. that impacts research, but the Canadians are just less concerned. And so th this one gentleman, Vancouver, put, he's put, he put almost $2 million into the... Uh, advocacy work. A uh, million came to PRG. He's fine. He's doing okay. And he's not worried. Um, and that's why I'm up here. Because Americans are intimidated. You know, look, our police force is being militarized. People are getting shot every day. It, it's going to hell down there. And, and so it's not a conducive climate to get people to get behind a major ad advocacy movement, which is why I came to Canada for the Canada Deter. Right? Indeed. Unfortunately, that's kind of spilling into, like, the militarization of police is kind of spilling into Canada more and more. Yeah. Up here, we're seeing the militarization of police as well. In the last 12 years, Canada, for, some, for various reasons, I don't know why, bribery, maybe the U.S. is threatening to kick all your teams out of the NHL, I don't know. But Canada has decided to follow the U.S., down the rabbit hole. And I'm going, why in the hell do you want to do that? For God's sakes, Canada should do its own thing. It doesn't want to do our thing. Our thing is not working right now. No. So I'm, I'm telling Canadians, do something, people. I, I know what, where you're headed. You don't want to go there. So when is the next big date for you? Uh, what's what's going to happen next to end this truth embargo? Yeah. I'm already meeting with congressional staffers on the House and Senate side. More meetings are coming. We've gotten several very strong articles, including Roll Call, a major political newspaper, and Mother Jones Magazine, the progressive magazine in the United States. Both of them link directly to the Rockefeller Initiative, which is one of the key linchpins in all of this. Uh, and they're going to be up indefinitely on those websites. Huge articles. Yeah. There's more articles coming. So we're driving the news. Um, the next... Uh, well... Let me put it this way. The congressional stuff is a slow process. It's not flashy. You meet with some staff. You meet some more staff. And, and all of these meetings are private. I do not t say, tell anybody who I'm meeting with, right, uh, because that just closes the doors. 
So that's that's kind of a, a, a private thing going on to try to eventually get to the point where they will say, okay, let's go public and announce something. Uh, the most likely big thing will be in the media. There's going to be an even bigger story that's going to happen. I may get on a major talk show, and that could be interesting because the, 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 the stage is set. Uh, the kindling has been laid. One major appearance could light a fire. Are you finding that the media is getting friendlier and friendlier to the UFO and alien issue? First or of all, it's not UFO. Yeah. The issue is extraterrestrial presence. Okay. It's not alien. It's extraterrestrial. Okay. Uh, yes. The fact is that they are realizing it's a huge story. They still have to cover it in a certain way, but they're writing the stories up and they're covering what we're doing. They know exactly what I'm doing. Everything is laid out. I'm not pulling a fast one on them, and I'm getting this coverage. And so there's this huge article on Roll Call, which everybody on the, on the Congressional Hill, I mean, this is the Congressional Hill newspaper, along with the Hill. Everybody, and there's 10,000 staffers up there, and the thing has got links to all the key stuff. It's got videos of Clinton, Obama. It's, it's got you know copies of the faxes I was sending. It's fantastic. Uh, that is non-trivial. Now, they had to couch it a certain way. Yeah. And they told me that. The, the author said, look, I have to couch this a certain way to get it by the editor. I said, no problem. But as the story intensifies, and in fact, in the, uh, in the uh, Mother Jones uh, article, the guy grabbed a quote that I threw out. I didn't make a big deal of it. And I don't know how many Canadians will get this, but I think a few will. He actually says this in the article. Bassett says that this, the Rockefeller Initiative is the exopolitical blue dress. So, you know what I'm saying, right? Yeah, a lot when of... the blue uh, dress turned up, there was no more debate about, we'll, we'll weather this storm, we'll work around this. It was over. The lies stopped and the truth came out. Had to. And you know, not only that, he had to give a DNA test and he was impeached. So with this Rockefeller initiative, what do you think that's going to have on implications for Hillary Clinton's uh, run for president? Huge. She has been able to remain silent on this for 23 years, as has John Podesta, Bill Clinton... Bill Richardson uh, and Al Gore, and they and, and those people I've just mentioned have either been president or run for president or been an advisor to a president 11 times, soon to be 13, 13 times. That's about as close to the, the reins of power as you can get or be in the reins of power, and none of them have ever answered a question or uttered a word about a three-year effort by a billionaire Rockefeller to end the truth embargo. They just, they don't want to do it because they're afraid it'll affect their political aspirations. We're, we're not going to buy that anymore. And so uh, in the Roll Call article, in the Mother Jones article, there is a link in the article directly to the Rockefeller Initiative evidence. Wow. And that's the first time that has ever happened. And in the Mother Jones piece, A.J. Vicenz, the writer, for the first time in 23 years, asked the Clinton camp about the Rockefeller Initiative. And her spokesperson, Nick Merrill, probably without checking with Hillary, stated, our campaign has a strict policy of never commenting on anything extraterrestrial. Wrong answer. So, do you have any final thoughts for our viewers? Uh, well, um, if, they, you know, if you want to follow this, un see this unfold, paradigmresearchgroup.org, Click on the main graphic, and you'll see the full status page of the whole Congressional Hearing Initiative. Media coverage, press releases, my lectures, everything, right? You can follow it. And if there's a Canadian out there that would like to help us get this done, all the contact information is at that site as well. Get in touch with me by email or phone, uh, and we will uh, put that money to good use. Excellent. Thank you very much, Stephen. My pleasure. Josh Steffler for Freedom Free for All Television. Stay tuned.